So, what's up guys? So, uh, day two in Melbourne, we, um, we went out for a balloon trip today and a vineyard tour. A hot air balloon trip, just just to be specific, because no, no, balloon, balloon trip. trip, we just stood there with balloons. We walked around the city going, hello Mr. Balloon. Although, interestingly, we have learnt that, um, genuinely, little mini rant here, sorry, the balloons, the type the helium balloons you get at parties and stuff, are one of the, they're the third largest killer of seabirds. So guys, please be careful with these balloons. Make sure they end up in the bin, not floating off into the sky and landing in oceans and stuff, because they kill birdies. So outside of crazy land, they kill yes, birdies. We, were, we went on a hot air balloon today. Um, that doesn't kill birdies. That doesn't kill birdies. Um, and it was, it was interesting, because we had to get up at five in the morning. But we were still pretty jet lagged, so it yeah. wasn't such a big deal for us. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we got up for that, um, and then got to the takeoff site, um, and it was really overcast and cloudy, and they did they did the whole setup with the balloons where they heat them up and they go big, and that was pretty cool. And they're like, oh, you guys are so important. You need to hold open the balloon. <laughs> and we're like, we're not really that important. Like a stick could do this job, but we're helping. Look. <laughs> we're as important as a long stick. Yeah. Um, and then when they did that, we started to take off and it was still really cloudy, which we, mm. we kind of sat there and we're like, oh, it's going to be really boring and we're not going to see anything and the clouds are super low, so we can't even see far. Um, there were some pretty sights and the, um, the balloon guy, he'd like flew super low and got really close to a lake. I think he said two feet. It looked like about three centimeters to me, yeah. but he said it was about two feet above the lake. We were all just sort of staring at it like... At what point do we jump so our feet don't get wet? But he didn't hit it at all. No. It was very cool. He was really, really good. And then he was like, right, time for the fun part. And he brought us straight up to 2,000 feet, I think it was, mm. um, which was above the clouds. And so you have to I get ne- through the clouds. And I have never seen anything so beautiful in my life. Like, it was just absolutely amazing just going through those clouds. I felt like Jasmine from Aladdin. I was trying to cuddle the cloud, but they're less soft and fluffy than Disney would lead me to More believe. wet and humid and... Mushy. More like, it just, yeah, it just feels like a really humid day. You can't really cuddle them. Your arms just like... It's just it's just like being in mist, really. Yeah. And cloudy. It's just fun, but... It was fu- super fun and so fun. beautiful. Because you get up there and it's just like this sea of little, like, cotton ball fluffs all around you and because we went so early in the morning that we had like the sun had just risen over these clouds and it was just stunning and now you can see we're little mountain tops just popping through mm-hmm. the clouds just ever so slightly um yeah all in all really good day there um gorgeous and then we had breakfast um and jumped straight onto a wine tour because you know what do you need at 11 o'clock in the morning more than a few glasses of wine yeah so champagne <laughs> breakfast followed by a wine tour yeah it was great, really, really good. We went around three vineyards in the Yarra Valley, which is the area just outside of Melbourne, and it's they they have quite a wide variety of wine that they produce. Mm. I believe it's old volcanic soil. So we've also, we've been to um, Sicily, Sicily and Napa Valley. Napa Valley, and those are very those are much younger volcanic areas, and it, it's very interesting mm. to compare it because we went to Sicily last year, Napa Valley the year before, and this year in Yara, so it's all quite recent, and yeah. it was very, very interesting. The wine was, I think the Australian palate is slightly younger wine than the European palate, so that was also interesting for yeah. us. Yeah, for, for me, I think it was more of, the, they have a really weird way of doing it, so when you go out in Europe or the States, they're very much like, here's our best wine, if you buy this bottle now, it'll age into this, but here they're like, this is a good young wine, if you age it, we promise it'll taste good, but you don't get to taste it. I think the issue was that they'd sold out of all the older yeah. bottles, pretty much. So like, well, last year's wine is really good around now, but uh, we sold out last year, so here's this year's wine. It'll be good in a year, we promise. We promise. <laughs> so that was kind of interesting. It was very different to what we've done before, because we have done a couple of wine tours before, so I think they have to be a little bit different to yeah. be interesting for us. And for us, this was a very interesting one, a very good wine tour. We really enjoyed it. Yeah, the big, the big interesting thing of this wine tour was we tried um, sparkling red for the first time. Right. Which is basically made the same way as champagne is, but they leave the, um, skins. the skins on the red. They also use red grapes in some of their champagne here, so, but without the skins on it, so you get a different flavor from champagne. But this sparkling red was with the skins left on, so you got this really like puce red color on the wine and it was mm. super sparkly. I believe it to be kind of standard in <clears throat> Australia 
uh, everyone that we've spoken to said, oh yeah, you have red sparkling on Christmas. In Europe, I've, I've never seen this mm. in Europe. And bearing in mind that the UK is, other than France, the world's biggest consumer of champagne. We drink more champagne in England than anywhere else in the world other than France. And we've never seen this. And it's not mm. like rosé sparkling. Yes, we've all seen rosé sparkling. No, we're not thick. It's red wine. Like, imagine a proper red wine. Yeah, it's a with bubbles. With bubbles. Not sweet. No. It's just a red wine with bubbles. Yeah. It was... We loved... We had two in two different vineyards and we loved both of them. Yeah. Absolutely loved both. We bought a bottle as well <laughs> and have drank that already. No, we totally still have it because we're not alcoholics. And we're going to show it to you. No, we've already drunk it. <laughs> but I think we did get some shots when we were out there of the red sparkling. Yeah. Well, really, really fantastic wine, guys. Mm. Um, if you do get a chance, do go go and go to Yarra Valley, get on a wine tour out there. There's some really nice vineyards. You happen to be in the Australia region. <laughs> yeah, as you do. <laughs> you know, just a quick trip over here. It's fine. Yeah. Just come for the wine. <laughs> it was really nice. It was very interesting for us. Um, I think one of the most interesting aspects for me was the last vineyard we went around was created by a French winemaker from mm. the Champagne region. So they used all the traditional Champagne methods, but of course not allowed to call it Champagne because not in the Champagne region of France. Mm. So they the came... French, right? So they came up with a really, really imaginative name of, not Champagne, but Chandon. Chandon. <laughs> it's not Champagne, but it's made using the same techniques. And they have four um, of their like flagship sparkling Australian wines. One of them is very traditional Champagne. One of them is a rosé style mm -hmm. Champagne. One of them is a very sweet Champagne, which I had and was lovely. And then one is these red sparklings that we've not seen before. Yeah. And uh, all four were good, but we, well, I really liked the sweetest one. And Michael got the red sparkling, which was again delicious. Very good. And it's just stunning, this vineyard. It just looks out across the most beautiful countryside. Yeah. So that was our, uh, our day in the Yarra Valley. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, and we will talk to you soon, okay? Bye. <laughs>